Recently, I looked back on my life and to say it plainly, I almost always succeed at almost everything I choose to do. Some do come quicker, some slower, but they definitely come. And surprisingly, a lot of people usually do approach me and keep asking me, how do you manage to get through and be successful at all these things? And of course, I always tell them what I do. The interesting thing I've noticed is that very few of them actually end up having the success. Actually, I've never seen any of the people who approach me on tips and knowledge on how to do particular things and be successful. I've never seen any of them actually follow through and become successful like they had always wanted. So I sat down and thought to myself, why do I always succeed and other people never do? And so I came up with a few answers and in today's video I'm going to be sharing them with you guys. So please get comfortable and listen to my tips for success. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Daniel and I'm the founder of FarmUp. FarmUp is an animal production company where we do breed chickens, goats, lots of animals. But most of our focus currently is on poultry. So we also do produce eggs, we sell dead old chicks, that's for both layers and broilers, doing dressed chicken soon. Really good and awesome company. I'm also a medical doctor and I quit my medical job at age 28 voluntarily. I wasn't forced, it wasn't under pressure to do anything. I voluntarily quit my job to follow my passions and desires and accomplish particular things in my life. And I'll tell you that I've accomplished a few things that people ideally consider difficult for someone to be able to accomplish all these things together at a younger age. I'll tell you some of them. Number one, I'm a medical doctor. Now, of course, that's nothing hard to accomplish. A lot of people are medical doctors. People even become medical doctors at younger ages than I actually did become. But the interesting thing is what I actually managed to do while I was a medical doctor or while I was studying to be a medical doctor. So in my fifth year at the university, I had a one month holiday. And during that time, I decided to teach myself a foreign language. I chose Spanish. And I assure you, in a one month holiday, I managed to teach myself Spanish. And right now I'm at a level where I'm okay, you know. I can communicate, I can go and live in a Spanish speaking country and I won't have any issues, you know. No other language being spoken, no English, no my local language, just Spanish. I can live there and I'll survive. I can watch a movie in Spanish, I can hold a conversation in Spanish. I'm okay. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I'm okay. Also, I taught myself to play the guitar and the ukulele. You can see a guitar in the background. I love music so much. I really love music. I have a ukulele over here, you know. So music is all around me. And most of what I know in these instruments actually did teach myself. I, I didn't go to a class. Most of what I learned by the way, even for Spanish, was through YouTube this platform that you're on, you know, just download videos, dedicate myself, spend a little time and learn these things. The other thing that I consider very, very monumental is I managed to quit my job voluntarily. Uh, a lot of people run the other way around. They, they quit as farmers. Some people run away from business and they want to go and become doctors because they imagine they earn lots more money over there. For me, it was the other way around. I quit my job as a doctor. Everyone was thinking, hey, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's happening to you? And I ran towards farming. So that's a few marquee things that I've noticed for me. Of course, that's not all. There is way more, but these are obvious things that everyone can see on the YouTube channel. And so how did I manage to do this? Yeah, how did I manage to do this? How have I managed to do this? How do I manage to accomplish almost everything that I do in my life? I'll tell you again, when I look at almost everything that I touch in my life, it turns to gold. It's very rare that I fail at something. It's not a mistake. When I look at myself, I'm not the bureaucratical kind of person. I'm not the kind of person who follows particular rules and regulations. I don't wake up in the morning every day. I'm like, hey, I'll follow this timetable. This is what I have to do. Actually, I'm not very good at to-do lists because I usually make to-do lists and I never follow through with them. You know, I end up doing a lot of other haphazard things, things that come up. So in terms of like reading books, I'd not always been the kind of person who reads books and you get to learn things about how to train yourself to do this, how to be disciplined, how to not procrastinate. Recently, I started reading books and I've noticed that I missed out on a lot in my past, but I had not always been that way. So how did I manage to succeed and get to that point. I'll tell you the thing. The thing I've noted is that for me, the most important thing has been mindset. Yeah. The way that I was trained 
coming up from when I was very young, the mindset issue is actually what got me to this point. To be able to do all these things and discipline myself to do all these things, it's a mindset issue. So what exactly in mindset am I talking about? There is five key points that I'm going to be talking about that I feel have transformed my life. We shall start with number one. You make your own fate. Your life is in your hands. You know, there is this saying that we've always heard from when we were young growing up. Que sera, sera. I believe I've said it in Spanish. I think it's also there in French. I don't know how they would pronounce it in French. I would imagine the English person would pronounce it as que sera, sera. That means that whatever will be, will be. A lot of people believe in that. I believe that's one of the most pathetic things someone can ever believe. How do you start thinking that life is just like that? Whatever will happen, will happen. You have no control over anything. I feel like a lot of people who believe such, a lot of people who believe in luck, are the kinds of people who don't want to take responsibility for their lives. The kind of people who don't want to take responsibility for their failures, especially their failures. You see, it's very easy to take responsibility for your successes. But for your failures, people don't. They'll always want to put blame on someone. But if you're the kind of person who decides that and you understand that everything in your life is your responsibility. If you fail, it's your responsibility. If you succeed, it's your responsibility. Then you'll have very high chances of succeeding. I'm the kind of person who believes that we make our own fate. You know, we make our own fate. Fate doesn't happen to us. I'm not the kind of person who imagines that if it was meant to happen, it will happen. No way. We have a role to play in everything that happens in our lives. There is always a role to play. So people look at me and they imagine, hey, it was, it was fate that I would turn out to be a doctor who quits and practices medicine. No, it wasn't fate. I had a lot of people come to me and suggest different things. Tell me, hey, you can't quit your job. You can't do this. You can't do this. But I made a choice. I told myself, hey, no, I'm going to choose my life. I'm going to choose what happens in my life. So you have to be willing to be responsible. You have to be willing to take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. If you take responsibility, then you'll be more likely to want to pursue particular things that will lead you in a particular direction. If you want to, for example, own a particular car, you wake up every morning and work because you know you need a particular amount of money. For example, you need a car that costs a million dollars. You're not going to go and do a particular job that gets you $5,000 a year and expect to own a car of a million dollars someday in your lifetime. Certainly not, yeah? You're going to have to take more decisive action. It's not just fate, yeah? You're taking responsibility for everything that happens to you. So you want to learn that guitar. You want to learn that piano. Hey, it's not fate. You're not going to just wake up some morning and you're magically playing that piano. You have to decide that I'm going to do everything possible to actually learn to play this guitar. So you get up, you get the discipline to practice for, you know, 20, 30 minutes every day. And when that happens, then you will accomplish that thing. Not hard. Just understand that you hold your fate. You see, luck always finds people who are prepared. If you're not prepared and an opportunity presents itself, it will feel like, you know, you just missed an opportunity. But no, you didn't just miss an opportunity. You didn't prepare yourself for the opportunity. If you're prepared for the opportunity, when the opportunity comes, everyone else will think you're lucky. But hey, you're not just lucky. You're actually prepared for the opportunity. So work towards it. Be intentional about everything. And then you'll have the correct result. Number two, you have to live it before you leave it. Now, I can't stress how important this is. It feels like something new that had just come up in recent psychology that for you, to manifest particular things, you have to live like they are happening. But it's nothing new, you know. There are forces in nature, and this is just one of those forces in nature. It's part of the law of attraction, you know. You have to believe something so much and live it before you actually experience it. I'm the kind of person who never really gets surprised when particular things happen in life. When good things happen in my life, I never get excited and I don't get surprised. It's because I live them so much that by the time they actually become reality physically in my life, it feels like I've lived there so much. It's like getting up and you want to own a particular car. I love the Land Rover Defenders. I actually want to own a Land Rover Defender. So I think about it. I think about it so much. I live like I actually do own a Land Rover Defender. I feel like I have a Land Rover Defender. When I'm driving my small car, I feel like I'm driving a Land Rover Defender. I imagine I'm driving a Land Rover Defender. But 
realistically, physically, I don't. But then in my mind, in my heart, I actually do own it. And what happens is that when you live a particular life, there are particular things you want to do, you know, you want to own a particular house, you know, you have to live like you own that kind of house. Imagine, control yourself like you own that kind of house. When you meet guys, you know, shouting nuisance at you and being stupid at you, you don't respond to them like that. You respond to them like someone who owns the kind of house that you want to live in. And the other advantage of living in those things is that it gives you an experience that will ensure that you go through particular things even before you get there. Let me explain myself. You see, before I started a farm and go to the level that I was at, I always imagined that I would have a farm. I always imagined I would have a big farm with lots of people on the farm, with lots of employees, with lots of clients. And so even while I still had a very small farm, I would continuously think and meditate upon this. I, would, I lived like I was there. And so what that created is that I would consistently find myself in different situations. If I got a client who comes and tells me this, what do I tell them? If one of the employees tells me this or they say this, what do I do? So I came up with lots of solutions in my head before I actually got to live that kind of life. And so it so happens that now I find myself in this position where I actually have to make all these decisions. A lot of them don't feel new because I've lived there, I've felt it, I've experienced it, and I've imagined it. Someone just comes and tells me this and it will, you know, just feel intrinsic for me to give them an answer. It's not that I'd always been a genius, no. When you live it and imagine it so many times, you come up with all these solutions that a lot of people who are new and people who had never imagined themselves in such situations will never ever imagine in their heads. And so I find that I'm actually ahead of other people a lot simply because I've lived there when I actually wasn't living there. Number three, if others can, then I can. If others can, then you can. You see, I'll tell you a story. While I was in um, my high school, I managed to go to a really good school because I had good grades. I mean, I was fortunate enough to have someone pay for me. You know, it's, it's not just luck, like I've said. This guy was looking for someone who was brilliant, who had gotten good grades to pay tuition for and go to that school. You understand, yeah? So, because I had gotten good grades, I actually qualified. Like I've said, I created my own luck. You could have said that I was lucky, but my studying hard and getting these good results actually made me lucky. It prepared me for the luck. I made my fate. That's simply trying to explain point number one, right? But let's get back to point number three. So after I got to this school, I find lots of kids with who are very fortunate. They come from families whose parents have lots of money, they own nice cars, the kids come with really nice stuff to school, you know, they come with a lot of money. And I was on the extreme end of the curve, you know. Um, my parents are not fortunate enough to have nice cars and to live in a really good house or to be able to afford to give me lots of nice things when I come to school. And so when I would get to school, I would look at these kids uh, looking at their parents and they imagined that everything that their parents have is theirs. And for me, the one thing that it taught me was that if their parents could manage to get to that point, then I can. The kids do believe and imagine that what their parents own is theirs, but that's not true. We all know in life that's not true. Your parents can be very rich and you turn out very poor. On the contrary, your parents can be very poor and you turn out very rich. If other people can, then you can. Takes us back to the first point again. The fate is in your hands. Everything is in your hands. But the thing that it motivated me was to think and know that I wasn't made this way, you know? There's nothing like someone is born to be poor or someone is born to not fail or you are born to not be able to own that car or you are born in such a way that you can't learn the guitar. If someone has been able to learn that language, if someone has been able to become fluent at that language, just a single person if that person can then you can you know try to learn from them yeah try to learn from them there are particular things that they do that have enabled them to get to that point that you actually can do and that will take me to point number four learn from everyone whether you like them 
or not. You see, a lot of people look at particular people that they don't like. You might look at, let's say, a particular musician and there are things about their lives that you don't love. Or you look at a particular sportsman. You know, you want to become a sportsman and then you look at a particular sportsman, let's say a soccer player, and there are things about their lives that you don't like, but you aspire to do particular things that they do. Hey, be willing and ready to learn from them. Be willing and ready to learn from everyone, whether you like them or not. You know, sometime I was telling someone about a particular influencer that I always admired. I wouldn't say I admired them too much, but I loved what they had done and what they had. And when I told them about them, they were like, hey, you know, you're a crook. How do you follow such a person? How do you believe such a person? But then I'm thinking, this guy is making, you know, a billion dollars a year. You're not even making $20,000 a year, you know? So you want me to learn from you and not him? There are particular things that he can certainly teach me. There are things, I might not like particular aspects about his life. Maybe his social life I don't like. Maybe his family life I don't like. But then there are particular aspects of his business life that I can learn from. So there is always something to learn from everyone. Yeah, That's something I learned at a young age from when I was very young in school. The people who you actually hate, the people who are unpleasing to you, actually have the most things to teach you. For me, that's what has always happened. Because what usually happens is that I always aspire to become better than them. Because I don't like them. I don't like the way they carry themselves. So I aspire to become better than them. So the easiest way to become better than them is learn from from them at least to get to their level you know learn from them the things that they do well let me be able to do them well then i will be able to do other things even better and then i can become better than them so yes be willing to learn from everyone and finally point number five probably the most important thing in life never give up you've got all these things you understand that you have to make your own fate so you're doing everything you can to make your own fate. You have to leave it before you leave it. You're continuously thinking about it and acting like you have it. You understand that if others can, then you can. And you understand that you have to learn from everyone. Once you've got all those things, hey, never give up. Never ever give up. Life is always about persevering. The hard times will come. Yeah, They always come. You know, when you're learning that language, you're probably trying to learn Spanish and you just find this tense that's too complicated. Hey, don't give up. You have to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. And if you try enough number of times, come on, it's inevitable. You're always going to succeed at it. It's like a child who is learning how to, to move, you know, how to walk. They'll keep falling and they'll fall and they'll fall. If they stop trying, they'll certainly never walk. But they keep trying and trying. They fall, they cry. You get them up, they fall, they cry. At some point, they'll be able to walk. Same thing, yeah? Don't give up. Of course, some things you learn slower than other people. Some people are genuinely more intelligent than others. So for example, it might take one person one month to learn the guitar and it takes another person a whole year to learn the guitar. But in the end, you've all learned. Never give up. If the other person gave up, they certainly wouldn't have made it. So you do these things. I believe, like I've said, this, a lot of the things I do are not theoretical. Yeah. A lot of it is simply a mindset change. It's not about particular routines. It's okay to follow routines. I've just never been a routine kind of person. Yeah? But I believe that when you do change your mindset, it's very easy for you to accomplish particular things. So change your mindset, live according to these things, and you'll accomplish a lot of the things and be successful in your life. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the notification bell. That way you never miss out on an upload. Lots of love. Bye-bye.